episode filed to the press session, and that is the whole truth of this case. Mason system. In order to understand it myself, I have to know the story of these last seven long years. Nothing happens by chance, all is connected. and ready to begin the final chapter of this story. Will the defendant be found guilty or innocent? The decision is yours. October 7th, 10.37am, right, anything, agency. Hello everyone, Triple S back here with some more Apollo Justice Ace Attorney with the last case of the game, we talked about Succession. It's actually a bit of a weird case because at some point, we just saw there the Mason system, that's a major point of this case. And it's a bit of a weird thing in that it's a lot of like what ifs and trying to piece things together that it's a bit weird. So it's like, Sort of truth, but not 100% truth. We'll get to it when we get to it. It's towards the end of the case, but it's a bit weird. It's the Mason system. But yeah, last case of the game. Let's go. Hey, Apollo. Look on TV. Look, look. Yeah, uh, I'm kind of busy. Whoa, look at that. He's the last grammar I, all right? Amazing. Apollo, you should be watching this. Now, ow, ow, what, what? I was writing about our last case in my journal. Lawyers are supposed to write things in records, Apollo, not journals. Why now? That case was three months ago. Hey, it's a long story. I did a lot, you know. I want to vacuum pack the feel of the moment for later. Right now, I'm wiring the crowd by figuring out how Lamar disappeared. That's right, Uncle Volant did that illusion too. But you're missing him on TV right now. Oh, I was just getting to the good part. I suppose I should watch a little TV with her. After all, her father's expecting me to look after her while he's away. What you're now seeing is a rehearsal for the greatest magic show on Earth. Happening right here at our very own Sunshine Coliseum. Sunshine Coliseum? Yeah, that's where the Governor's concert was. Only three more days until miracles happen here, right before your unbelieving eyes. The legendary troop of Grammar Eyes performing for the first time in seven years. It's going to be great. I'm so there. You and Daddy are coming too. The legendary Grammarize. If Juicy's real father was still alive, he'd be on that stage performing miracles. I've got the tickets and everything. Here's yours, Apollo. Magic show ticket received. Sweet. Ah, you're here. Working hard or hardly working. Hey, how have you been? Hi there, stranger. Not exactly the kind of greeting I want to hear from my own kid. Though he has been gone a long time. <laughs> How goes it, Trucy? Here, I got a present for you. Yay! Pudding! I love pudding. Ooh, it's fine fresh. Not just one pudding, but three whole cups. I have to pace myself. Well, I'm beat. That's right, Daddy. You're on a top secret mission. You've got to take it easy with the secrets, you know. <laughs> How right you are. So, you still can't tell us what your mission is? Not at all. Maybe it is time. It has something to do with you anyway. Huh? With me? Ooh, maybe you're getting a top secret mission too. Maybe you could be one of those guys. A spy. Can I just be a defense attorney? <laughs> to be honest, telling you about the mission was my whole reason for coming here today. 
What? Tell me. You've heard of the ju jurist system, yes? The jury system? That's right. The new legal system everyone's talking about. Have you heard of it, Apollo? Huh? Uh, maybe? Maybe not as many people are talking about it as I thought. The jury system, huh? Let's have a chat with him about the jury system. So, Daddy, what's this jury system thing? Well, Trucy, do you know what a jury is? I've heard of it. Isn't that those people who sit in court in those old, old courtroom dramas? The ones who get to decide if a guy's innocent or guilty? Do you know Apollo? Only from TV. It's 12 people chosen from the community, right? Well, they're thinking about reviving that system. They're calling the new system the jury system. No more doing whatever you like, Your Honor. Not quite that harsh. The juries cooperate with the judge. They help analyse the case from different angles. And there'll be only six of them under the current proposal, right? Well, you know yourself, Apollo. Their findings directly affect the verdict. Hopefully people will start taking the courts a little more seriously now. I feel like I'm on some, some kind of educational TV show. Starring Dr. Wright. <laughs> Dr. Wright is assistant Trucy and mascot Apollo. The perfect team. Mascot? Hey! The secret mission. So, what is this secret mission? The jury system is my mission, more or less. Anyway, keep in mind that new ideas like this system are always risky, Apollo. Too true. Everyone's got an opinion, and they just talk and talk, and nothing gets decided. Kinda like you, Apollo. Uh, I'm not that bad. Am I? In any case, we're going to give it a shot. A test, if you will. I don't like tests. We'll take a case as a sample and choose six jurists. I'll be the one helping with that process, incidentally. Helping how? Well, for one, I'll be chair of the jury system, simulate a court committee. The chair constructs the ideal situation, choosing the case, the jury's candidates, even the judge at the courtroom. Wow, it's like you have a real job. I was never that good at the piano, to be honest. Once a lawyer, always a lawyer, I guess. The trial's tomorrow, by the way. Don't miss it. The trial simulation, that is. Simulation, huh? Sounds interesting. So, what kind of case is the trial simulation about? Well, since it is the first run-through of a new system, or it's something simple. Good thinking. No sense weighing yourself out on something too serious. True. The case is a murder. That's not simple at all. By simple, did you mean that the defendant is... Guilty. Yep, most likely. So, good luck, Apollo. Um, with what? With the trial tomorrow. You're defending, of course. Recall that I said it has something to do with you? Go for it, Apollo. Just a test case, anyway. No sweat. Yeah, but there's still a verdict to be decided. And a potentially serious sentence. The most serious in a worst-case scenario. Ah, you mean the verdict's for real? That's not a test trial, that's a real trial. All the forms have been filed. There's no turning back now. The trial begins tomorrow at 10am. Hope you can make room in your schedule. Why am I only hearing about this now? Ah yes, there was a change this morning. I picked a new case. Eh? Something that happened last night. Uh, let's do it with the land ground right. Hey Apollo, I know you're all excited about that secret mission. What about this? The Troop Gramurai Grand Magic Show. Huh? Oh, right. The card tricks. They're not card tricks. They're grand illusions, miracles, the apocalypse. Oh, God. I didn't see the rest of it. So what? That's three whole days from now. It's at Sunshine Coliseum. Let's go. Let's go today. We can say hi to Uncle Valan. Have fun. What? I can't go by myself. You know I'm not very outgoing. Right. Why not go with her? But what about the secret mission? Oh, don't worry about that. You'll hear all about it tomorrow, regardless. I don't trust that smile. He knows something that he's not telling me. Yippee! Now you can take me to the Coliseum. <sighs> I suppose it wouldn't kill me to pop over there. Ah, Grammarai. That reminds me. 
What's this, Daddy? Isn't that silver cat the grandma I seal? Consider it a birthday present, Trucy. Thanks, it's great. But today isn't my birthday. Huh, good point. What day is it today, Apollo? Huh? Today? Um, I think it's Recycle Your Plastics Day. Then it's a Recycle Your Plastics Day present. Yippee! So it's plastic. I've given up trying to understand them. It's much easier that way. So what is it? Can I open it, Daddy? No. Huh? You'll need that envelope someday. Someday soon. Don't open it until then. Well, why don't you just hold on to it until then? Because that would be the logical thing to do. Grammar envelope obtained. An envelope about the grammar, sir? Huh. And the trial simulation. Alright, so what case are you going to use? You really want to know, don't you? Of course I do. I mean, I'm going to be defending, aren't I? If all goes well, then yes. Of course, it's just a test. I wanted everyone to start uh, without preconceptions. A blank slate, as it were. There's a difference between having a blank slate and just being totally clueless. Whose dumb idea was that anyway? Well, mine. Committee chair, remember? Oh. Well, if you want to know that badly, I suppose. I could give you permission to examine the scene of the crime. Good. That's better. But you can't talk to anyone involved with the case. What? How am I supposed to defend? You let me worry about the details there. Remember, I'm in charge of this trial. All of it. But you don't want it to backfire, do you? Apollo? If I'm in charge of the whole trial, that means the entire affair is my responsibility. For good or for bad. Just do what you can. And don't worry. I know what I'm doing. Uh, Alright. I'd recommend going down to the detention centre. Your client's waiting for you. You can ask about the scene there. But you just said I couldn't talk to anyone involved. Oh, you could talk to your client. If you can get her to talk. Well, time's a wasting. Okay, so we've got to move to the detention centre. Let's go. October 7th, detention centre. Visitor's room. That's 20 minutes we've been waiting here. 20 minutes! Maybe I should complain. I'm sure that guard has better things to do than stand there pretending he doesn't see us. You know the minute we get angry, the client will show. It always works that way. Like shouting, oh waiter, and they're standing right behind you. Oh god! Is that client going to be much longer? What are you talking about? Haven't you already started the meeting yet? Huh? Where'd you come from? Well, anyway, please have a seat. I'm nervous, Apollo. It's the silence. It builds suspense. Why don't you do something, Trucy? You're a magician, aren't you? Th that's right. Okay. I'm the amazing Mr. Hat. She passed out! Huh. Miss Magic Underwear might have been a better bet. That's Magic Panties, Apollo. Okay, we're gonna try and talk to her. Introductions? Um, uh, hi! Well, I'm your defence. I really think it has to be fate, you know? And by fate, I mean destiny. Did you know I'm good with astrology? Tell me what's your sign. Are you on a date, Apollo? I can tell you mine if you'd like, Apollo. No, never mind. Just got carried away there. I see destined to get difficult clients, it seems. Uh, your name? Um, so what's your name? Oh, right. I'm supposed to introduce myself first. I'm Apollo. Apollo Justice. And I'm Tracy Wright. I know. This is getting nowhere fast. Uh case. Yeah, no. Maybe you can tell us what happened. I'm your defense attorney, after all. 
Um, anything out of the ordinary happened lately? Well, the other day this tourist from out of town stopped to ask me directions. Later, Trucy. I feel like I need to ask directions myself here. Well, that was fruitless. Though I think I understand despair a little better now. You did good, Apollo. Huh? Look! She's doing her nails! What? Are nails more important than defence? Is that it? Let's go, Trucy. Excuse me. Ooh. C could you... Could you read this? Um, sure. I feel like a teenager on a first date. This is a love letter we passed from desk to desk, to desk at school. Ugh, stuttering. Stop looking so wistful and read it, Apollo. It... It's a business card with a name and an address. The name is Vera Misham. The address is for Drew Studio. Vera's card and it's got record. And you're giving me this card because... Well, looks like we're finished here. I wonder if Drew Studio is the scene of the crime. Let's go find out. And we move to the Drew Studio. I'm just amending my guide here. October 7th, Drew Studio. Wow, this looks like... It looks like a studio. It's like life imitating art, so maybe it's the other way around. Huh. But the tape on the ground there, it's a bit jarring. Yeah, it looks like we found our crime scene. Apollo, look at all those paintings. Hey, don't touch those. It's okay, I'm just looking. Ooh, fish. Huh? Apollo, look at this one. Looks that finished. You can still see the rough sketch underneath. But that's odd. The rough part doesn't look like the rest of the painting at all. Yeah, good point. That is odd. Drew Mission's paintings added to the cot record. All the paintings have a really different style too. Ah, I thought I might find you two here. Yay! Emma! Long time no see. Oh? Seems like I run into you far too often. I'll bet I know why you're here too. You know about the trial simulation tomorrow? I've heard about it, sure. So Mr. Wright chose you, huh? We don't even know what the case is about. Well, he was killed. The artist who owns the studio, that is. Mr. Drew Misham. Misham? And his daughter was put under arrest. Yeah, we just saw at the detention centre. It was funny though. She seemed more like a victim than the kind of person who could commit murder. You don't say. Not even by poisoning. That's how it was done, you know. They say poison is a woman's weapon. Poisoning is a common way to get the job done when the murder is a woman. Ah, no, there you go, right there. <laughs> poisoning? Anyway, Mr. Wright told me you'd be coming. Feel free to take a look around. I'll just be over here, with my Snackoos. Snackoos, basically think of Jakku from Star Wars. We can't talk to anyone related to the case this time around. Which means we'd better find out as much as we can here at the scene. Or else. Okay, oh, first off, we... I assume we do some... I think we just do some talking first. The victim. So this um, Drew Misham was some kind of artist? Apparently, did a lot of illustrations for books I hear. Had a lot of female fans too, for what it's worth. Oh? Well I guess his stuff is kind of pretty. Like that oil painting over there, for instance. Um, yeah. That wasn't one of his illustrations, actually. Huh? So it was a standalone painting or something? Is that what she means? He was an odd bird, Misham. Hadn't shown his face to anyone until the end. What do you mean, to anyone? He was always locked up here in this studio, apparently. His only connection to the outside world was through letters he'd put in that letter box over there. Letters? Do people still write, le write letters? Yeah. What do you mean, Apollo? I mean, when was the last time you wrote a real letter? 
Uh, I don't most people use email and stuff these days. Not Mr. Misham. Could have stand technology, it seems. He did everything by mail. Maybe he thought that way was more artistic, you know? Letterbox added to the cot record. In any case, the only person besides him allowed in here was his daughter, Vera. Oh, you mean the killer? The suspect, please. We took some fingerprints, of course. The only ones found in the room were Mr. Misham's and Vera's, actually. Basically. Basically? Actually, last night, Mr. Misham gave an interview to a reporter for the first time. It happened during the interview, apparently. His first interview ever? Could you tell us a bit more about what happened the night of the murder? The defendant. So, this woman, Vera. She's Mr. Misham's daughter, right? Yep, a real sickly girl, ever since she, ever since she was little. I never went outside. She did kind of give off a withdrawn sort of aura. She was homeschooled by her father, apparently. It was quite a scene when they took her to the detention centre. She was screaming about how she'd die if they took her outside. That does sound like a scene. In the end, she agreed to leave if she was allowed her good luck charm for company. Her good luck charm? Apparently, she has this charm that magically gives her the courage to go outside. Why can't I ever get a normal client? But why would a shut-in daughter kill her own dad? Don't look at me. So about the poison, it was found to be in his coffee, right? No, not precisely. Not precisely? What does that mean? It means see for yourself, I think. Uh, the night of the crime. Like I said, last night was the first time someone from the outside came into the studio. I guess mysterious painters who never go outside made for good articles. And it just so happened that he died the night of his first interview. At around 9pm every night, Vera always made him a cup of coffee. Last night he drank his usual coffee and suddenly became violently ill. And died? She poisoned him on the night of his interview? Wouldn't the reporter see? He wasn't near Mr. Misha when she brought her father his coffee. He was checking out some equipment in the back of the room. That's a stark contrast between these two halves of the room. Supposedly that's why uh, she didn't notice he was there. It was a reporter who called the police, in fact. Wait, but why is she the suspect? If anyone's suspicious, it's the reporter. Yet the reporter never got near Mr. Misham's coffee. Even Vera acknowledges that. Regardless, I want to know more about this reporter. Okay, we're done talking. It's time to examine. Painting hidden behind the dresser. So this one, if I can line it up. That ah, wrong button. That, because it's the A button. Hey, there's a painting hidden back here. Hey, you're right. What if it's embarrassing somehow and you didn't want anyone to see it? You certainly seem pleased by the possibility. So normal. It's hardly something to get mad about. Huh? Was it Apollo? What does this painting look like? Yeah, never mind. Better get a professional opinion on this. Hidden painting added to the cot record. Uh, now we look at the coffee cup. Uh. That's the cup, and then there's... How much of this coffee cup was for guests to use? Guests? Did the police already analyse this cup too? Not a trace of poison was found on that cup. So the killer was after Drew Misham alone. And then... The mug... Ah, that's the victim's coffee mug. Aha! So the poison was in here. This is my first time seeing a re real poison mug of coffee. I would hope so. Poisoned coffee. Not exactly, actually. What do you mean? No traces of poison were found in the coffee. What? You'll have to figure it out the rest of figure you have to figure out the rest yourself. Yeah. I'm officially not on your side after all. 
coffee mug as to the cut record. Uh, dum, da -dum. Okay. The guide is saying that I should look at the coffee mug in. I should check it. And oh, I need to use my mouse for this. There should be a blue mark. Ah, there we go. Don't know if I'm supposed to do this, but the guy's telling me to. It might just be some extra stuff. Hey, look there. That stain doesn't look so healthy, Apollo. That must be the Blue Mountain stuff we've been hearing about. Something tells me that even Blue Mountain coffee isn't this blue. No, this stain is probably... Uh, but ask Emma. See, I have no idea if we needed to do that. Or if we could have just gone straight to presenting the coffee mug. Um, Emma, about this mug. There's a pale blue uh, residue on the rim. Huh? Ah, the, that! Yes, well, it's just a rumour. But I've heard there's a kind of coffee called Blue Mountain. I'm pretty sure it isn't actually Blue Emma. Ah, right. Okay, you got me. That's left over from my testing spray. Forensic science. I knew your hobby was behind this somehow, Emma. It's not a hobby. So what kind of scientific stuff were you up to? This spray, that's what? It turns blue when it touches poison. So the poison that killed the victim was on this mug? That's right. See? It wasn't in the coffee. The killer applied it to the rim of the mug itself. Wow, science is amazing. It certainly is helpful. Maybe Emma would be willing to help us out a bit more. You should try buttoning her up, Apollo. They say flattery will get you everywhere. It's certainly worth talking to her a bit more. Uh, yep, so we just go straight back into talking about forensic science. I bet Emma could help us out here. Don't forget, flattery will get you everywhere with her, Apollo. Huh? What are you two whispering about? Well, I was thinking. I mean, what is it we always do when we run into you at a crime scene? What is it we always do, scientifically? Ah, you know me too well. Okay. Okay, meaning we can get, um, scientific now? Oh, I suppose. Just this once. Bring me anything you find suspicious and we'll check it out. Okay, and then I present the coffee mug again. Um, Emma, about this mug. There's a pale blue, uh, residue on the rim. Ah, the, that. Yes, well, that's just a rumour. But I've heard there's a kind of coffee couple of nights. I'm pretty sure it isn't actually blue, Emma. Ah, right. Okay, you got me. That's this over from my testing spray. I think science is really a hobby. It's not a hobby. It's not a kind of scientific stuff for years. They spray this, but it's just, it's just poison. So the poison that killed the baby was a bit. That's my see. Wasn't in the coffee. Kill the poison is pretty with more stuff. Well that's nice basically. Certainly it's special. Maybe I would be a chest which beer. You should put it up all So far we get a bit of it. Certainly but it's a nice British bear. I'm about poison analysis. There we go. <laughs> I was afraid you were going to ask about that. See this solution is used to test for a Atroquinine. Atroquinine. Atroquinine? Atro, huh? Atroquinine. It's like strychnine. Uh, the deadly poison found in the autopsy. Uh oh. I know that spark in her eyes. She's getting excited. Best tread lightly. It's one of the most virulent, virulent poisons, but it's absorbed into the body astonishingly slowly. It takes at least 15 minutes from the time of ingestion for an adverse effects to show. Oh, and guess what? Recent research has shown. That's fine, really. We don't need to know all the gory details. I think I get it. You just spray this stuff on something you want to test, right? Precisely. You can find even the sightly trace of poison with this. I want to try two, Emma. Pretty please. You don't have to ask me twice. I already used it on everything suspicious, of course. Yay, let's give it a whirl, Apollo. Ah, what are you doing? I'm just seeing if I got a reaction off of you. How's this for a reaction? Never do that again. I'm not poisonous. Tell it to those hapless witnesses on the stand. 
Let's just get down to checking for real poison, shall we? Okay, where do I spray? Oh, it says spray around, you won't find anything. Okay. It says at some point I should fail. Oh, there's the other half of the room. Did you try to realise that? I've already been here for ages. Go on. It's supposed to say that I failed. I'll do I click do I click back? It says spray around, you won't find anything. I'm going to click back. Ah, there we go. I was supposed to click back then. Huh, could have saved myself a whole lot of time there. Too bad. No reaction there. I'm sure Emma checked out all the likely spots. Wait a second. What is it, Apollo? Did you spray that little desk over there? I don't think so. The spray probably can't reach that far, you know? Let's check it out, just to be sure. Oh, okay. And it says... Oh, here. Eek! A reaction, Apollo. Ah! Where, where? The inside of that cute little frame, look. Well, would you look at that? Nice going, Trucy. I'm known to work magic. Never mind that I was the one who found it. Tiny frame added to the cot record. Why would the inside of that frame have poison in it? Looks like we found the only other place that was poisoned in any case. Uh, oh, oh. Okay, we pan to the right. And we examine... The desk, and it should zoom in. Uh, we look at the drawer. Let's open. This envelope has been opened and resealed. Ooh, I know how to do that. Take a pot of boiling water and hold the envelope up to the steam. The glue melts and it opens. Cool, huh? Whoever did this wasn't so delicate. You're right. Looks like they just ripped it open and stuck it back together. Huh? The postmark on this letter is from seven years ago. Why would someone open a letter, then seal it again? Uh, I better hang on to this. Red envelope as is the copper card. Uh, oh, is that it? Oh, he showed the red envelope to Emma so we can spray it. Emma, about this. Oh, that. Y yes, why, that's a bright red envelope. She sure is jumpy. Someone opened this, didn't they? My lips are sealed. Your lips are sealed? That's a first. You mean, you know what's inside the envelope? Sure, I read it after all. Ah, you mean you were the one who ripped this open. Heh, <laughs> please. I would have steamed it open. But she did sneak a peek at it, apparently. Know that I have a powerful weapon on my side. Weapon? Yep, the use of tools. Highly specialised tools for information gathering. Tools I wouldn't mind getting my hands on. You should try flat ring her, Apollo. They say a little praise can open big doors. Never heard that one, but it's good advice. Let's try talking to some more. About the envelope we found. I was wondering if you could help us out with that tool you were mentioning. <laughs> you want to know about my tool, do you? I don't like this conversation. It's called an X-ray analyzer. X-ray, like the X-rays you get at the dentist? That's right. At least that's what I call it. Huh? It has a real name, but it's much more complicated. The X-ray spectralization... Something. How am I supposed to remember all that? So basically it lets you see inside things. Like envelopes. That's right. You're sharp, Trucy. But it's a bit more complicated 
complicated than that in practice, of course. It's very complicated to say that we're complicated. Actually, to tell the truth, I'm not really sure how it works scientifically. Can I try it out, Emma? Please? Oh, I suppose. Of course, I've already checked out everything suspicious myself. Alright, let's give it a spin, Apollo. Ooh. Yeah, what are you doing? Oh, just seeing if I could see for your hair. It's like lead. Point that thing at me anymore and it might all fall out. Then I wouldn't need an x-ray machine to see through it. <sighs> let's just get out of business, shall we? Right, let's test it on a sample first. It just so happens that I have a lottery ticket here. You set the sample in the device like so. I don't see anything. Patience, there's no need to get all antsy. Look at the right side of the screen. That's the layer view of the envelope. Layer view? You've got it set to display the outside of the envelope now, see? Actually, it's quicker to just have you give it a try. Turn that dial there for me, would you? I'm not even doing that. That's right. That's how you choose what depth you want to scan. Hey, I got something. See? That's how you can read the letters on the ticket inside. Cool, huh? Except I can't read them. Just turn the dial a little more. What you have to understand is that a sheet of paper isn't really fat at all. When you zoom in that much, you see that paper is like a bunch of hills and valleys. Wow, really? This x-ray device uses a beam with a wavelength of only 0.05 microns. It breaks cards down into thin layers, so it can only show what's written on that layer. I'm not entirely following you, but what good is it if you can't read anything? That's why we go on to step two. Try rubbing the image a bit, if you would. The image? You mean rub the screen? Oh, do I have to do this? Okay. There, that fixes the image on the screen. Now turn the dial again, just a little. Ah, so it like holds it in place. Good, now you can rub this image to fix it too. Hey, I get it. Just keep doing this until we've got the whole thing. Yeah, exactly. Not bad. Neat. Let's do some more. So... Oh, and then I keep turning it somewhere. Oh god. What is that supposed to be saying anyway? Focus. Oh. Well, we got all the way down to the bottom. Why is it so hard to keep spinning this? Now nah, we're out of it. Click again, sorry. Ouch! You lose. At least you know where you stand, eh? Anyway, now you see the true hidden power of my weapon. Neat, her. Let's try it out on the real thing, shall we? Okay. Let's see how this goes then. That ah, wrong way. It's gonna take a bit. After the beeps. That looks like it should be it. No? More? Well, 
There we go. Okay, let's print this one out. Thousand Mission I see uh, someone deposited a hundred thousand dollars into Mr. Mission's account. These paintings must be really valuable. There's another page in there. Can to take a look? You better do. If you're going to read someone's mail, you might as well read it all. Here it goes with the second page then. Ugh, more. Paint it in. Paint it in. Paint it in. Paint it in. And paint it. There we go. Print this one out. Sign the papers and send in the thing, envelope, uh, stuff. So it was a letter about payment for one of his paintings. Why the secrecy though? And, and what? Why was this letter the only one in here? It's seven years old, right? Maybe it had some special significance to him. Well, Emma? Well, indeed. She knows something she's not telling us. Looks like she's keeping mum about it. Red envelope updated in the court record. So, Emma, I was wondering, what's the story about this reporter that came here for a story the night of the crime? I'm afraid I can't tell you because he's going to be a witness tomorrow right here. I thought so. I'll never forget that face. But what was his name? Oh, right. Brushel. Brushel? He's after a scoop to sell to the papers. So a reporter comes for an interview with a painter. His first interview ever, and that night he's killed. Seems strange to you? Really strange. It does raise a few questions. I'd like to speak with this reporter if I could. Well, I hear he's on the beat today too. He said something about covering a magician. Magician? Well, if it's not true, see, that leaves only one other person. It wasn't for that grammar by any chance, was it? Yeah, something like that. He's got some big show lined up, I hear. So he's out interviewing Valant Grammarai. Looks like I'll be heading out to that Coliseum again sooner than I thought. Here, I'll give you that reporter's card if you want. Brussels card has got record. Uh, okay, I'm just going to learn my guide here. Because that was a big section. Um, we've got some more talking to do. And then some more scanning. And then that'll be the end of this part. So, uh, move to the Coliseum. October 7th, Sunshine Coliseum. I think as well that if you look, you can like see, maybe you might be able to see like uh, Larry, Larry Butt somewhere. It might be him down there in the pink painting, maybe. Woohoo! This is it, Apollo. The place where magic and dreams converge. Just a while ago, it was the place where murder and nightmares converged. Let's go see how they look over that. What about the case? What? <laughs> Only a performer last like that. The young Miss Trucy. How often I hoped we'd meet again only to tell myself it was an impossible dream. Gee, young Valance, how's it going? I'm glad to see you too. Of course you are. Humility is definitely not one of his strong, stronger traits. Well, Miss Trucy, how does the day find you? If you come to give me flowers, do it after the show, I beg you. Actually, we came to wish you good luck. And congratulations on your big magic show. Oh, but it is I who wish to congratulate you. Not everybody is so lucky as to witness miracles such as I shall perform. Yeah, yeah, you're amazing. We get the picture. Well, we'll watch in wonderment as Magnifies... Uh, Magnif... Magnifies... Ma I'm going to say Magnifi. Illusions are reborn. Here on stage, by my hand. Yeah, yeah, whatever, dude. Let's have a chat. The Big Magic Show. Everyone's talking about the Big Magic Show. Is it true that the Grand Rai Miracle is back after a seven year absence? Miss Trucy, I must apologise. The show and this honour should have been his. Daddy. My co-magician in training, Zach Grand Rai. 
if that terrible thing hadn't. It's okay. Your father was a great magician, Trucy. If you're alive, then I, Vlant Gormorai, would have been proud to stand upon this stage as his assistant. Thanks, Uncle Vlant. You know, I'm happy you're doing the show. To think we get to see the great Magnifi's illusions again. She really is looking forward to this, isn't she? Uh, Magnifi Gramorai. My mentor, the magnificent Magnifi Gramorai, was a true deity among magicians. A creator god who gave birth to magic and illusions that defied our very imaginations. I was so little when I last saw one, but I still remember the shows. His shows. He did wheelies in a sports car through the air up with the audience. And then sped off to outer space faster than the speed of sound. I'm guessing that memory was a bit embellished. For seven long years, the world has been waiting for a miracle to match his. As heir to the Grand Marai Troop's secrets, it falls to me to provide one. It is my God-given destiny! Um... Yes, you, nameless face who speaks for the nameless masses. How can I help you? If the world was waiting, why did you hold off for seven long years? Hey, it appears the land is only formed. Perhaps you have heard of the magic known as Law, which governs our land. I have, though I'm not sure that it qualifies as magic. Performance of Geneva's miracle was impossible. A certain law prevented it for seven years, but no more. Seven years? That phrase sure likes to pop up, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Why was that? A little matter called performance rights, Miss Trucy. Performance rights. Can you tell us about these performance rights? Magnifi's magic relied on an incredibly innovative idea, a trick, if you will. That trick was considered his property, and as such was protected by property laws. Intellectual property, maybe? Magnifi knew this and bequeathed it in his will. To one person. You mean... him? Yep. Miss Trucy was your father. Zack Grammarai was the inheritor of the Grammarai miracle. Daddy! Yes, as you well know, he's gone. He disappeared suddenly seven years ago. I think I see where this story is going. Once a person is classified missing for a certain period of time, they're considered legally deceased, correct? In all absoluteness, that rolled up sleeves conceal your competence well, young man. Those rolled up sleeves, ah. That certain period of time of which you speak is seven years. Ah! Yep, Miss Juicy. Though it pains me to say it, this past spring, April to be precise, was the time. Your father was legally declared deceased. In the absence of a formal will, the secrets of our mighty ma mentor Magnifi passed to me. It could be Magnifi, but it, it, it's like magnificent, so... This was in fact stipulated in the will by, by Magnifi himself. Is that how it works, Apollo? Yep, it's called death in abs absentia. He's declared missing permanently. Daddy! Okay, we're done having a little chat for now. We've got to present Brussels card. So, a journalist was here on the story. All eyes in the universe are upon my stage. All pens seek to commit its myster mysteries to paper. Blech. Um, his name was Brushel. Brushel, 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 Brushel. I think he remembers him. Doesn't look too happy about it. Brushel, that cloying smell of mint when he smiles, yes. Um, could you tell us more about him? What did he want? Okay, then we're back to chatting. And we're going to talk about Brushel. A man by that name called on me just now. Just now? Valant's vision is always toward tomorrow. Valant's feet step always forward. That is all. That's all... Very confusing. I am to perform a big magic show, yes? I wanted someone to cover it. Yet, the idea is only for that incident. That incident? In any case, I requested that the rapacious reporter remove himself. So a painter has died, what of it? It is but a footnote in the footlights compared to the magical Gramorai. Look of a lamp. Do you know where the reporter went? I recommended he visit that place popular with penalised perpetrators. The detention centre. He was a rude individual. Might I see that card? Uh, sure. He would tear apart my respectability. I will tear apart him. Oh, here it comes, Apollo. 
Uncle Valance Big Magic Trick. Is he going to fix the card? I'm not sure that qualifies as Big Magic. What happened to the Big Magic? <laughs> Is it not more miraculous for it to stay ripped? You must have really not liked that journalist. Uh, and then we present the envelope. Apparently. I bet we do. Oops. Uh, this envelope. Not the other one. Um, I was wondering if you could tell me about this. Aha! Well, that bears the grammar I seal. Huh. Uncle Valant? Something wrong? Trucy, where did you get this? Huh? Um, Daddy gave it to me. Your... Your d -d daddy My partner's at Grand Rye? No, my other daddy. Phoenix right. Why now? Why would your Lord Daddy... What? Lord Daddy? That's kind of stretching the whole archaic thing a bit. The signature upon the back, do you recognise it? That belongs to none other than Zack Grammarai. What? Daddy signed this? Why'd I be so bothered to open it? I I'm sorry, but I can't let you do that. What's in this envelope, I wonder? Oh, are we going to scan this? No. Maybe. Now the time has come, and I must return to make my... Prestidigitation preparations. By a leap, it's juicy. Thanks, Uncle Valant. Three days from now, make ready for a miracle. Whatever you say, you yellow crazy person. What do you think that the journalist was after? Why did Valant react like that to this envelope? I think it's time to pay the decision to send her another visit. Okay, back to the... Actually, we go to the Write Anything Studio first. Agency Studio. Write Anything Agency. No, we don't. Or did I have to move there to get to the centre? Probably. Doesn't matter. We're here now. October 7th, Detention Center Visitors Room. I think I hear what you're saying. They're all doing it for the money. End quote. No, 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 not at all. Looks like someone's already meeting here. Maybe that reporter? Hey there, how you doing? Who might you be? Ah, sorry, we didn't know someone was already here. I'm a poor justice attorney at law. Talk about a nervous monkey. You? Your justice? You? You know me? Do I know you? Of course I know you. Stares down what it says on stand till they spill beans. End quote. Th that's not true. What's he writing? Are you a reporter by any chance? Woo, you, your juicy. Eh? Am I famous? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Trucy Wright hates carrying a bag. Does everything she yells in the panties, end quote. Eek, that's so not true. Just hold on to your breeches there. I'll wrap up this interview in a jiffy. Interview? So, guard, I think I know what's going on here. Guarding rooms is my life. What else could I possibly need? End quote. No, how many times do I have to tell you this? Look, I've got work to do. You, you deal with him. Um, did you come here to interview the guard? No way, what a pickle. Accused wouldn't talk, had to interview someone or go plum crazy, end quote. Eh? Oh, there she is. I should have guessed. Where are my manners? Names Brushel, Spark Brushel. I'm not picky, journalist just closes his eyes, writes, end quote. What's that nauseatingly strong mint smell every time he grins? So you've been interviewed by me, you don't know what f thrilling is. That's a hard word to say. Wild romp through crossroads of mayhem madness, end quote. I can see that. He's writing something again. Well, if he's a reporter, maybe you know something. Uh, we we'll just jump straight into the chatting. Spark Brushel. So, Mr. Brushel, you're a journalist? Ah, me. Look, let me state one thing for the record here. Yes? I'm the interviewer, you understand, yeah? I'm the one asking the questions here. They quote. Okay. For instance, you think a movie director watches movies? Well, I think he probably does. Exactly. I need to understand. Huh? The night of the crime. So, the night of the murder, you were at Drew Studio? 
Who, me? Look, let me state one thing for the record. Yes. I look calm and collected, but I'm busy, real busy. Uh, always on the road. Journalist always buys one-way tickets. Never looks back. End quote. I can understand that philosophy, but... Want to know the thing about one-way tickets? Once you use them, they're gone. Oh, because you have to give them to the guy at the airport. True enough. But don't they give normal tickets away too? Exactly. See, it's the same thing. What is? Oh, God, this guy. The interview. So you went to do a story on Drew Mission. And you never had a story done about him before? That's right. Look, let me state one thing for the record here. What? I'm sure you're going to want to know about my source. What tipped me off to Drew? Why did you do the interview in the first place? Well, yes. Look, it's like... Oh, I've got it. So there's this burger joint with fabulous ketchup. You think the burger guy's going to tell me where he got it? At the supermarket, maybe? Exactly, see? That's what I'm talking about. I think I may have actually understood that one. Well, there's nothing they can talk about, really. Walls of ears, eyes, especially glass walls with speakers. End quote. Right, guess we'll leave then. Ah, but since you're here, might as well tell you a tidbit of news I saw, just for the heck of it. Sure, tell us, just for the heck of it. I remember it like it was yesterday. I seen a movie on a trip and wandered into this burger place with amazing ketchup. Amazing ketchup. When an article in a tabloid caught my eye. Famous oil painting selling from art dealer's gallery. End quote. I believe it was. An oil painting? Happens every day, right? But I thought I'd seen that painting somewhere before. A painting of a giant peach floating down a river. Someone stole an oil painting. Of a giant peach? Journalists can smell scoop better than burgers. End quote. Okay, do we need to do anything here? Oh, we need to present the hidden painting to him. The one that we found is the one that he's describing. Uh, here it is. All right, let me go on the record here. Yes, I know what you're going to say. Brushel, take this. Write brilliant column, end quote. I don't think so. But buddy, I write brilliant columns about one thing. And that's food. Try to understand. What could he possibly be writing? He didn't listen to a word I said. Okay, I'm not going to get anything out of this guy then. I assume. Or did I just completely wrong? No, I did it right. Uh, I'm pretty sure we now moved to Drew Studio. I think. Could be wrong. No, we're good. October 7th, Drew Studio. Well, how'd it go? Find anything out? Actually, there was one thing I wanted to check with you. Well, what was with that scary face you're making? What's with the I know something about I'm not telling face you've got going, Emma? What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? We present the hidden painting. This painting came from behind that dresser. Ah, yes. So? It was stolen, no? I was hoping you wouldn't figure that out. Do you think you could tell us a bit about this? I suppose. It's what you think. Drew Misham was a forger. A forger? Uh, to talk about forger. So, what exactly is a forger? Well, basically, it's someone who makes forgeries. Fakes, in other words. Fakes. Copies of an original. Exact copies, so precise you can't tell them apart. But why not just photocopy them? The big problem with forgeries is that people try to sell them as the real article. It's a crime, of course. So Drew Misham was... A criminal? I'm afraid so. He received money to create elaborate forgeries. To supplement his work in illustration, I guess. I see. Actually, that's why I brought this here in the first place. What do you mean? When you're trying to determine if a painting is a forgery, the rough sketch underneath can be a valuable clue. So the rough sketch is like practice for the real thing. Like doing a magic trick in front of a mirror before you go on stage. But not in the case of a forgery. Not necessarily, anyway. You know what the finished product is going to look like, after all? Oh, yeah. I guess you would. That's why I brought this. I'm going to use it to see what's under the paint of the finished pieces. 
I get it now. Not that I really needed to go to such lengths. Seeing as how one of the paintings was only half finished anyway. Still, it'd be neat to see Mr. Mishan's rough sketches. Kind of like what he was drawing when he thought no one was looking. True. That would be pretty interesting. And maybe valuable for our case. We should try bringing her up, Apollo. Fast will get you everywhere, they say. Maybe I should ask him to help us out. Always do. Always do. Uh, we... No. Oh, Christ. I'm gonna have to... We have to scan all three of these. This is gonna be great. It's gonna take a while. Uh, I kinda want to see the rough sketch on this painting. And I was wondering if your tool there might be do the trick. Oh, fine, fine. Just this sign, though. Let's check it out. Okay. Oh. Okay. Ah, I keep going the wrong direction. Okay. Get that plugged in. This is going to take a while. Because we have to do all three paintings. One of them... I'm pretty sure the forgery will be the one that, like, you know, tips it all off. But I think we have to scan all three of them. Oh, Christ, what happened there? Oh! I recognise this. It's the poker hand. So all three of them are about the previous cases. Yep, there we go. Put this one out. I recognise this. What? What the heck? Wow, he really blows. The finished painting isn't anything like the rough. Devices like mine didn't exist until recently. He probably thought he could draw any sort of thing he wanted to for the rough. What do you mean? Well, in the past, you could only analyse the composition of a rough sketch. Composition? In other words, the traces of charcoal between paint and canvas. So you could tell if there had been a rough sketch. But not what it looked like. Ah, I think I follow you. So in essence, it wouldn't matter what was underneath the finished painting. Some pros would actually paint out a rough sketch entirely. Then do a completely new painting on top of that. So Mr. Misham was drawing whatever he wanted before painting over them. Possibly. Is there a problem with that? Not particularly, but something about the sketch itself is kind of... odd. You're awfully silent all of a sudden, Apollo. You think we could check out uh, one of the other paintings? Well, sure. You like this section stuff, don't you? Okay, we'll do this one now. And this will probably correlate to the other case. So these were actually what I would have used for the case pictures of my YouTube thumbnail thumbnails because before the HD version of this game came out, those were the only things that you could really use for like the case art. Ah, there we go. Oh, oh that's done. Wait, I don't actually recognise that. Oh, yeah, it's the guy pulling the uh, the noodle stand. Yeah. This one too. What's wrong, Apollo? You look so serious all of a sudden. Um, you think I could just look at the last of the these? Fine by me, knock yourself out. Okay, and then this one. So that was the noodle stand as well. It took me a while to realise what it was because it just looked like a house, but then I realised it was the noodle stand. Uh, 
Oh, and there's Gavin up on his uh, thing. Looks like. Flame a guitar. Looks like. What the heck is all this? I hesitate to ask why you're getting so excited. You sure your device isn't leaking some kind of strange radiation? Juicy, look at these three sketches. Do you not notice anything? Poker hand, the noodle stand, Gavin and his flaming guitar. There! Now you're both white as sheets. What's going on? These sketches are of the three cases I worked on. What? The murder in the poker room at the Borscht Bowl Club. The dead man pulling the duel stand. And then... The events that transpired during the Gavinus concert. What could it mean? How could he have painted those things? And why? That's what I want to know. Wait, it's Drew Misham. Your father? Give me a break. Does that seem even remotely possible to you? I've never even heard of any Drew Misham before. I hadn't even seen a picture of him. But there were my cases. Drawn in this, drawn in this canvas. Every single one of them. Couldn't have been a coincidence. Just who was this Drew Misham? What did he have to do with me? To be continued! Funnily enough, we do actually find out about Apollo's dad uh, in a much later game, in Spirit of Justice, I think it is. That's a, a game that's miles and miles and miles away, and only on the 3DS, but hopefully coming to Xbox at some point. Hopefully. I mean, they're putting the first three games on the Xbox. I hope they put, like, Dual Destinies and Spirit of Justice on there so I can record them in good quality. And then we can learn all about Apollo's dad in that game. But not this game. But yeah, there you go. This guy's been sketching out uh, Apollo's cases. All the cases that he's done so far, he's sketched them out. So somehow he's been following Apollo and his cases for some reason. And then we have his daughter who's been convicted of murder. She doesn't like to speak. Then we've got Brushel who's a pain in the ass. But yeah. There you go. That's the start of Turnabout Succession. And the start of the end of this game. And it's going to get a lot more confusing at some point. With the whole Mason system as I mentioned before. But anyway. There we go. That was Smart Apologists Ace Tourney. Thank you for watching. I shall see you all next time. Good. Bye. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like and let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you decide to subscribe to the channel, that would be amazing and ding that bell to be the first to hear about my new videos. Thanks again and I shall see you all next time. Good bye.